Now, I will present about the history of Malaysian Parliament. Previously, before the independence, no state had their own parliament. Even though British colonial government had allowed Malay, Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak to set up their own legislative boards, but they were not supreme lawmaker because they were still subordinate to the British High Commissioner. The Red Commissions, which draft the Constitution of Malaya, where Malaya gained independence in 1957. Later, they modeled system for the Malayan governments following the Britain Bicameral Parliament, where one house were directly elected and the other were appointed by the king, which are same as the British House of Common and the House of Lords. The Malaysia was formed in 1693 after Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak joined Malaysia. Later, the Malayan Parliament became known as Malaysian Parliament. According to Malaysian Constitution 1957, most senators were elected by the state assembly represent the interests of states. In Malaysia Constitution of 1963, each state received two members and the others were appointed by the king which following the advice from the cabinet. In 1965, when Singapore left Malaysia, its legislative assembly became a parliament and it was no longer represent the Malaysian parliament. Lastly, the parliament was suspended only once when the racial riot were occurred in 13 May of 1969. Later, from 1969 until 1960, 71 by parliament were reconvened the nation were managed by the national operation councils and policy that's all for me thank you assalamualaikum and hi my name is vanila and i will present about the concept of the parliament of malaysia the Malaysian parliament represent the democratic structure of the government the highest legislative of the nation consists of three components, which is His Majesty the King, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. The Malaysian Federation First Parliament Assembly took place at Sanku Abdul Rahman Building at Kuala Lumpur after the first independence general election on 11 September 1959. The Senate and the House Representatives meet on the day. The first order of the day, both chambers, President and Speaker were appointed, and 38 of Senators and 104 elected representatives were represented at the ceremony. Malaysia was formed on 16 September 1963 when Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore agreed to join Malaysia. Since then, the Malay Federation Parliament is known as the Malaysian Parliament. Today, the number of members of the 12th Parliament has grown to 70 senators and 222 House of Representatives. That's all for me for the concept of Parliament of Malaysia. Next is the function of Parliament. Parliament is the legislative authority for the federations and it enacts law to be enforced nationwide. First, law making. It was introduced and amend and replaced law in Malaysia. Law are introduced by a minister in the form of bill. The functions of the executive and judiciary are based on the laws that are passed by the parliament. Second is representations of deliberative. It was present to people in the government. It to raise various issues and matters of the interest and also concert with the constituency. 
Third is control of the executive. It was checking and supervising the activities or the administrations of the executive and influence the policy of the executive. It was through vote of no confidence, interpolations and adjustment motions. And the last function of parliament is control of national finance. It was presentations, considerations, and authorizations of the annual budget. There was no tax should be collected or imposed before the approval of the parliament. The government expenditure should be authorized by the parliament. Hi. For my part, I'm going to talk about issue related. My first point is over centralization of policy making powers at the federal level. Over centralization of executive powers at the federal level has caused parliament to be loaded with huge legislative duties if compact is compared to the foreign countries. As revealed by the Phoenix Institute study, the Malaysian federal state to state law making ratio is an all time high. It is of 8.8, which is the highest, compared to the Australia only 3.29 and India only 1.20. Putrajaya expanded powers have also significantly reduced the number of areas such as public transportations and education held by the state government during the immediate years of Malaya independence and the formations of Malaysia in the 1960s. Within Malaysia, the number of laws passed by the state government are starkly lower than at the federal level. Again, find, uh, again the findings by the Pinning Institute study have shown that the number of bills passed by the Barisan National Federal Government in 2012 stood at 44. Why the Pakatan Rakyat Control State of Pinning and Selangor only ratified two and five state legislation respectively in the same year? Parliament is landed with heavy legislative burden vis a vis a state assembly, assemblies and direct result of over centralization of executive powers at the federal level. Similarly, the quality of debates has also been compromised in the parliament as well. More interestingly is, Pinning Institute found out that the Pinning State Assembly spent as many as 12 day debating on individuals bills as compared to the parliament, only 1.55 day per bill. In 2012, in terms of the time span per bill, per bill the Pinning State Assembly used 29 hours and 15 minutes to every bill, almost triple the time span by the Barisan National. Majority Parliament Act 10 hours and 25 minutes. Considering the broad legislation, the parliament to cover the significantly low number of days spent in debating each bill does not really commensurate with the heavy responsibilities for our supreme legislative body. For the second point is lacking the much needed special committees to look into public issues. There is also a lack of special committees to address numerous issues of fundamental interest to the nation's public at large. For instance, New Zealand's parliament has a total 13 select committees such as business, defense, education, foreign affairs, social service, social service, local government, health, government, administration, finance, and so on. In contrast, our parliament only poses five, five, only five committees. It is Standings Order Committees, Committee of Privileges, 
Committee of Selections, Public Accounts Committees, and House Committee. No doubt, it will be a stretch for this committee to effectively respond to those specific issues considering the broad state of the functions they are established upon. By all means, such numerical difference reflects the development of our parliamentary system throughout these years. As we know, Malaysians and New Zealand are Commonwealth countries and follow the Westminster system. Both countries manage their respective parliament differently, which, which is the former seeks to strengthen parliament's authority and role is solving public issue vis-a-vis -vis the formations of special committees to the to later does otherwise. As mentioned case, the ruling coalition's lacks of seriousness in the strengthening our parliament severely affects the responsive, responsiveness and the effectiveness of the legislative body in tackling a wide array of public issues at hand. For the third point, is limited research capacities of our parliaments. Besides the ruling coalitions, has so far failed to recognize and address the long-standing problem of lacking research capacity in both chambers. Besides employing 15 research personnel within its research unit as of October 2013, the Barisan National dominated Dewan Raya has not pursued for the, the possibility of allocating even one researcher to all the members of parliament until today. The same goes to the Dewan Negara, where the research capacities of the senators are severely restricted for the same reason. In comparison to the US Congress, Congress it hosts around 1,600 research staff, including policies analysis, attorneys, and information professionals. Within it, research arm, research arm, the Congressional Research Service, almost 40 times than that of Malaysia. Hence, it is no coincidence that the U.S. Congress can produce thousands of high-quality detailed reports on specific areas of interest from foreign affairs, homeland security and defense to finance, science, science, education, healthcare, environmental protection, energy, immigration, and so on. This is in sharp contrast to the Malaysian parliaments, which generally unable to furnish the MPs with detailed reports on individual areas of public interest, unfortunately, such sorry circumstances has been ongoing for the past five decades. Also, for the last point is the quality of our MP is in question. Finally, there is also the old issue regarding the quality of our MP. Needless to explain, anyone who reads the Dewan Rakyat news or watch the video about the chamber's proceeding will be aware on how the MP debates the motion table by the opposition. Often irresponsible remarks whether chauvinist or illogical as well as personal attacks have been directed to opposition MP from the ruling coalition's elected regs, causing a broad, a broad end of various debates in the lower house or worse still complete chaos. The effective functioning of Parliament have been relegated to the point that the Deputy, the Deputy Speaker Wan Junaini Tuan Kujakfa conveniently compared the Malaysian Parliament today with that of the Bangladesh. Furthermore, certain MPs have the tendency to skip parliamentary session throughout the year. It is astonishing to see that despite not holding minister ministerial positions or important government posts that require urgent attendance of all officials, matters and frequent travelling. There still exists a number of, our, of MPs not attending parliamentary sessions for debate as well as voting processes on certain bills.
such irresponsible sections in the direct betrayal of the trust which the people give to their elected representative. Of course, these are the main prevailing problems in our parliament, which the past and present routing coalitions have conveniently brushed aside for many years without seriously addressing them. There are still many other issues of less significance that also warrant attention from all quarters, especially the public. With more Malaysians begin to feel the policy emanating from the failure of our parliamentary to function effectively and the situation in the parliament continues at, as it is, we may ex expect more public calls for parliamentary reform in the coming visa vis or so. If that has not happened, we may end up with the public losing total faith in our parliament system. Of course, these are the main prevailing problems in the parliament which the past and present ruling coalitions have conveniently brushed aside of many years without seriously addressing them. There are still many other issues of less significance that also warrant attention from all the quarters, especially the public. With more Malaysians began to feel the policy emanating from the failure of our parliamentary to function effectively and the situation in the parliament continues as it is, we may expect more public calls for parliamentary reform in the coming years also. If that has not happened, we may end up with the public losing faith in our parliamentary system. That's all from me and thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum and my name is Farah Nizati. Now I will, be, I will be presenting about how to overcome the issues related to the parliament. First is the issues of the over-centralization of policy making powers at the federal level. These issues can be overcome by decentralizing the powers at the federal level to the state level. The state, le the state will have their own state civil service. The significant powers and responsibilities of the federal ministers should also be transferred to the state agency in order for the state level to uh, can, um, can regulate their own law and legislation legislations according to the state. Next, it is the limited research quality capacities of the parliament. Malaysian parliament need to be able to finish, uh, to furnish the MPs with the reports on each department by providing a file of the department's work. This is because, uh, as we know, the MPs, the MPs are not be able uh, to fulfill their whole responsibilities because.